F1 2020 feels great on a controller, but for the true Formula 1 experience, a wheel is the way to go. Adjusting dozens of settings and sliders can be a daunting process, but cars will feel fantastic when you get them right. If you need tips on how to set up your wheel, I can help. Let's get started. Hey everyone, hope you're all doing well today. My name is PJ and today we'll be going over the various wheel options in F1 2020. Wheel configuration is a very personal thing. The ideal settings will be different for everybody who watches this, but in this guide I'll show you my setup, run you through the options and tell you what they all do. If you ever have questions about F1 2020, sim racing or you just want to hang out with a good community, I stream on Twitch every Friday. The link is in the description. Also, if this video helps you out and you want to see more, subscribe to the channel for future guides, but for now, let's get going. So before we get into F1 2020, there are a couple of things I need to change on my wheel to begin with. And for context here, I'm using a Fanatec Club Sport Formula V2 as my rim. I'm using the Podium Advanced Paddle Module for the paddles. I've got six paddles on the back here instead of the standard two. The base is a Fanatec CSL Elite and the pedals are also a CSL Elite with a load cell on the brake. We don't have many things to change here and fortunately a lot of these can be left at default because the game does a good job of providing plenty of options for calibration and force feedback. First off you've got five profiles here on the, on the screen. So I've got, I've got set three which is what I'm using for F1 2020 and Xbox. Set two is my F1 2020 on PC because it handles slightly differently over there because I have extra buttons and extra features to use. And set one is my Dirt Rally 2.0 setup. So set three, we go in here and we go into sensitivity. And the first thing that we're looking at is this is the amount of rotation in the wheel. So for example, if I set it up to 500, the wheel will rotate about 500 degrees. But if I set it down to 360, which is similar to what a real Formula One car uses, then it only rotates 360 degrees. I set my wheel to 360 all the time for any game, no matter what I'm playing, whether it's F1 or Dirt Rally or anything like that, because I even play Dirt Rally with an F1 rim and it feels good. Next, you've got your master force feedback setting. So this is the amount of feedback that's coming out of the motor. I leave this at 100 and then I tweak it in game depending on what I need. Shock vibration, I also leave this at default. I'm not going to go into details here. Braking ABS is a subtle effect that happens when you push down far on the brake pedal. Past a certain threshold, I have it set here at 75. When I press down 75% brake pressure, the wheel will vibrate a little bit. It's just a subtle reminder that I'm nearing the limit of the brakes when I cannot see any throttle or brake indicators on the screen. Drift mode is, in my opinion, the most important setting on the wheel that you need to get right before you go into the game. So this sets the amount of enhancement the motors do on top of your turning. So for example here, I have it set to four out of a maximum of five. So when I flick this, the motors are going to spin the wheel fairly quickly over to the other side. Whereas if I set it all the way down, then I do that and it barely moves at all. And I have to put in a lot of force to turn the car. I have it up fairly high because it's fairly similar to how a real F1 car would have very advanced power steering systems. They're not very hard to turn because they need as much comfort as possible when they're driving. Five is a bit too aggressive for me and I find that it turns the wheel so aggressively that it may actually hurt my arms. So I leave that as it is. Brake force is a way to get the right amount of feeling and sensitivity in the brake. So when I enter it here and I have it got at 40, I will press down on the brake and my objective here is to get all the lights to light up because that's the same as 100% brake pressure in the game. And if I find, like say, I have it at max, I am not very strong on my left foot here. So I'm pushing all the way down as hard as I possibly can and I'm only getting half the pressure. So I need to lower that down until I'm pressing as hard as I can. And then we bring it down and then I bring it down one more just to be absolutely certain. So now when I press hard on the brakes, I am getting 100% brake pressure as I can see from the lights here. And then I have fine control over the lower levels as well. In fact, in F1 2020, I set it down to 30 because I find that's the sweet spot for the way I want to use this. 
FEI is an effect on Fanatec wheels that attempts to dampen the noise that comes from all of the force feedback in the motors that are happening. So you may have your full force feedback in the game and if you've got FEI at high and you're on for example a desk rig or you're on a simple wheel stand, the whole rig may shake and rattle and it may actually cause a bit of disturbance and not give you the full force feedback experience so you can for example turn this down I'm using a fairly high-end rig here so I have this set at 100 and I don't need to worry about it the multi position switch function this I believe is not fully supported in F1 2020 but I'm not entirely certain I will have to do more research on that and share an update in the comments but on Xbox, I know it doesn't do anything because the multi-position switches don't work on Xbox in general. They're not supported. It may be something that you can try on PC, and if you have any insight in this, then please let me know in the comments. The last thing then to point out here before we get into the game is your middle switch here. So if you've got the Fanatec Podium Advanced Paddle Module, which I have with the dual clutches on the bottom, this lets you choose what those do. So for example, I can choose the clutch bite point, which I have admittedly yet to experiment with in F1 2020, but it is there to give you the dual clutch experience that a real Formula One car has. In Dirt Rally, for example, I use clutch plus handbrake. So my left trigger is a clutch and the right one is a handbrake, which I find very useful because I don't use a standard handbrake because I'm driving with a Formula rim. This is the third option is brake and throttle. So this simulates the braking and the throttle when you're actually driving. So you can play the entire game with hand controls and this is supported in F1 2020 as well. So if you have, for example, if there's a reason that you cannot fully use the pedals, then this is a cert this is a good way to go. And then mappable analog axes, I don't believe is fully supported on console, but it may be something you can try it on PC. And I'm going to set this back to clutch boy point because that is my preference. And we are going to get into the game. So here we are now in F1 2020. And as you can see, I'm on track here in Austria and I am in the pause menu and we are going down to preferences and then controls, vibration and force feedback. Here you will see when you've got a wheel plugged in that you have multiple options available. There are defaults for many of the supported wheels. So for example, if you're using the Xbox One Universal Hub, you can use a preset there with the preset buttons in all the right places. And you can do the same for the CSL Elite. There's even one here for the Formula V2, which is the wheel that I'm using. I have tweaked mine a little bit, so I'm going to go down here to my setting and you can save multiple profiles as well. I've got my Xbox One controller settings here, which I have also done a video on. You can find the link down below in the description but we are going to go in here to our formula v2 steering wheel and when you open it up you have all the various file management options so you can make multiple copies of this if you want to try out different things or you've got different feedback setups depending on different cars or anything like that you can just customize this to your heart's content First up is the control scheme. So these are your button bindings. What button or what pedal are you going to use for various features? So most of this is pretty standard and the default profiles do a pretty good job at assigning everything to the right place. So you may not actually need to make many changes here. You've got your standard controls up here. So what are you going to do for the accelerator? What are you going to do for the brake? What are you going to do for steering? I'll give you a hint, it's the wheel. Uh, you, what are you going to use for your pause, for your gear shifting, for your clutch, all sorts. Now, one quirk of using steering wheels on Xbox is that you're limited in the number of buttons you're allowed to have. It is similar to the amount of buttons you're allowed to have on a real controller, which unfortunately in my case, because I've got the Formula V2, a lot of these knobs and switches will not be supported on Xbox. That is a Microsoft specific thing. It's not related to Formula 1 2020 or any other racing game. It's a console wide thing that Codemasters can't do anything about. You just have to live with it. On PC, you have full access to everything here. They are all considered buttons and I will go through what I use on PC after I go through my Xbox buttons so going down to the rest of the buttons what I use here is the look back button I have it set to B by default it is set to A I use it for B because I find that easier to access 
and I use A for something else which I will show you down further below. Look left and right, I don't use those here because I don't have enough buttons supported on this wheel to accommodate those. DRS and pit limiter, these are default, so that is the Y button here, which would be triangle on PlayStation. And if you're using the Podium Advanced Paddle module, I also have it set to the top paddle on the right hand side. So that is a very quick way for me to activate DRS and also the pit limiter. The multifunction display, which is your menu commands while you're driving, I have this set to A, but also this is set to the click within the middle of the stick here, which is the A button, and that gives me all of my menu commands. So whether I want to change my fuel mix or I want to change my differential or anything like that, that is all done by either pressing A while I'm driving, or if I can't fully reach it, then I'll press down here, I'll click this, and away I go. Menu buttons, they're pretty standard. Scroll up, scroll down, scroll left, scroll right. These I do not use because these are not supported on Xbox. And then the overtake button is the X button up here. Now I could reach up here, but this, because I'm using the Fanatec Podium Advanced Paddle module, I also have a button up here on the top left, which I have used. And now I'll press there and assign it. There you go. And that, those are my button bindings, and it's fairly self-explanatory, and it's almost default. There's only two or three changes here, and away you go. Next up, we've got calibration, which is essentially what are the inputs you are doing physically in the real world, and how they are translating into the game. So this is all... Similar to most racing games you will find, you've got your dead zones, you've got your linearity, you've got your saturation. And one very handy thing you'll see there on the bottom of the screen is that you've got a live readout as well of your inputs, which is very useful for when you want to try out various things. So the first thing we're going to look at here is the steering Z zone. And this, for example, let's say you cannot fully set your wheel back to a zero position that sometimes your wheel might drift a little bit. Steering linearity affects the difference in sensitivity between the center point and the remainder of the wheel rotation. So a high linearity value will make the center far less sensitive than the far left and the far right extents of rotation. And what that essentially means is when you have it on zero, then your steering is fairly linear. So when I turn, for example, I'm going to turn 50% left here, which is 90 degrees because I'm using a 360. And now if I turn up the linearity, you will see that the number is actually going lower and lower and lower. And what this essentially means is that for the lower inputs in the wheel, I have a little bit more play. So if you're finding, for example, when you're going through slight corners that don't require a lot of steering input, if you're finding you're turning too much, even though you're only turning a little bit like this, then you want to up this setting until you feel you can get a fairly smooth steering transition. I have relatively decent control on this, so I tend to leave it at zero and that is totally fine. Steering saturation, this is essentially the outer dead zone. So for example, I'm going to turn the wheel here. I'm going to turn it about 100%. Yeah, I'm going to turn it 100% of the way. And I'm going to turn this up a little bit. I'm going to turn it up to 50. And now you see, as I turn it back, I'm still at 100% steering lock until I get to around here, and then it scales back down. Now, the reason you may want to do this is if you are turning and you think you're turning all the way, and you're not actually turning all the way, like, this feels like a full lock to me. But if I turn this all the way up to let's say 10. Now when I turn that far and my muscle memory has conditioned me to turn that far then I know I'm getting 100% steering lock and I don't have to go all the way to the soft lock which is built in with your wheel rotation settings. I tend to like the physical feel of hitting the stop on the end so you can see here there's a bit of a judder when I hit the end and that's a physical feeling that tells me okay you've turned as far as you can go if I don't if I don't hit that I know I can still turn a little bit 
which is very useful in slow corners. The settings for throttle and brake are essentially the same so I will just go over the throttle and you can imagine the same thing for the brake. So throttle, dead zone, this is much like the steering dead zone how much minimum input do you need to put in before it registers? So let's say for example you have a habit of resting your foot on the throttle even when you're not pressing it then you may want to up this a little bit so that you're getting zero input when you want zero input. This is also very important for the brake because Formula 1 cars have very powerful brakes and you don't want to be resting on the brake pedal and unknowingly slowing down all the way on the straight. So. I would set them to zero if you're not having that issue but if you are or if you're having like for example here I feel I'm off it but I'm actually still on it by two or three percent then I will turn that up until that goes down to zero. Throttle linearity this is similar to the steering linearity so this changes the rate at which the level goes from 0 to 100 so if I have this all the way down to zero then zero percent throttle travel will give me 0% throttle input and now I have it at 8 and now I push it up and this is what I feel like when I'm pressing 50 and this is what I feel like when I'm pressing it all the way down and the reason you want to change this and I would recommend this is if you're driving without traction control it can be very hard to judge the low throttle thresholds that you need for some corners to stop you from spinning out so for example, I'm trying to get I'm trying to get 40% pressure here, but I'm finding it a little bit inconsistent because I'm not hitting the right amount of travel. Like I'm pushing what I feel is fairly light on the accelerator, but actually I want to turn this all the way up to 50. There we go. That is just about right. So what this means is for the first 50% of throttle travel, it's only going to move a little bit of the accelerator and you can see here now I have fairly fine control over it which is very important when you're driving a Formula 1 car because they are very powerful cars and the rear wheels can spin up very easily and spin you out of corners. It's one of the toughest things you can do in the game as well. So if you're driving without traction control I would highly recommend you try throttle linearity at 50. If you're still struggling I'd say put it up to 60 or 70. I initially had it at 60 or 70 and then once I started getting a little bit better with throttle control I turned it down to 50 and then as I improve over the coming weeks and months I'm going to turn it down lower and lower until I eventually get to zero. And then throttle saturation this is essentially your outside dead zone so the same as I mentioned here with the wheel. So here I'm pressing down on as hard as I feel I can for this demonstration and I will need to turn this up until I make sure I get 100 and then maybe do a couple of more clicks just to be safe. So now I have the confidence so that whenever I press down on the throttle or the brake, because I can do the same thing down here, whenever I press down I know I'm getting 100% and I don't need to worry about my inputs. So I'm going to set these back to my preferences which were everything on 0 and then this on 50. So we just looked at calibration and that is the physical inputs that you do that impact what happens in the game. Now we're looking at vibration and force feedback which are what are the effects that happen in game that come back to you and that you feel through your hands. So without, go without being too obvious about this turn it on for a start because if you've got no force feedback then you're not going to feel anything when you're driving which is a very strange sensation. And one of the reasons most people play with racing wheels like this is to get the force feedback and get the feelings that you get in a real car. Next, this is your master setting. So this is your vibration and force feedback strength. You don't necessarily need this to be very high, I find, because if you have it too high, you'll end up actually fighting the car as it goes through the turns and you're not confidently turning. What you wanted to do with force feedback is... The sensation that you get from the tires and the sensation that you get from the road and the track surfaces, you want to feel those so that you have a better understanding of how much you need to turn, brake and accelerate through corners. If you've got this too high and you're focusing so much on actually maintaining grip on the wheel, you're not focusing on driving, which is the most important thing after all. As I mentioned previously, I have it set to 100 on the Fanatec itself, so I have it set in-game to 50. 
which I find to be a nice balance. One thing to remember is that real Formula 1 cars have excellent power steering systems, so they're not difficult to turn the steering wheel. And that is something that I find a lot of sim racers tend to have it very high. And if they like strong force feedback, that's totally fine. And if they are strong people as well, then they can handle it. I am admittedly not a very strong person, so high force feedback settings tend to throw me around a bit too much and make me struggle with my driving. So I have this set at 50. This seems absolutely fine. The next three effects then, these are based on how the car interacts with the road. So I will start down here. Off track effects is pretty obvious. So when you drive on the grass, the wheel will shake and give feedback. I have this set to 25, which I feel is a nice balance. You can have it set higher, but there is also a preference for having things low because then you can focus on the settings that you do have higher. So for example, I want to know that I'm on the rumble strips when, I, um, when I'm driving and I'm not necessarily looking at them. And the way to do that is to set the rumble strip settings so high. So when I drive over the rumble strips, the wheel will rattle a little bit, but not too much to get away from my driving. And then on track effects, this affects like if you're driving over bumps on the road and all that kind of thing, but also it has a subtle impact on how your tires feel as well. So for example, if the if you put too much throttle down and then you realize that the rear wheels are starting to spin up and you're starting to lose control, you will feel that through this through the um, on track on track effects and wheel damper this essentially changes how heavy the wheel feels I tend to like a fairly light wheel so I keep it down at 25 but if you like a wheel that requires a bit of effort to turn and doesn't just flick across like this then you can turn that a little bit higher understeer enhance understeer enhance this is a very useful thing especially if you're starting out on a wheel so what this does is as you steer a Formula One car, if you start to steer over the limit, and there is a limit where you've got perfect amount of grip or you're putting in too much slip angle and now you're actually understeering. So what'll happen is you'll get your normal force feedback up until the limit of grip. And then once you go beyond that, the wheel will start to get loose, which is the game's subtle way of telling you, dial it back a little bit and then you've got the proper grip through the turn and you can maintain a very high speed. And then finally, the maximum real rotation. I've already set this on my Fanatec wheel, and this just calibrates it in-game as well. So I use a 360-degree rotation, which you can see right here, and it is absolutely fine. Now, these are shortcuts for various panels on the multifunction display. So, for example, you want to open certain menus, you want to change the damage panel, you want to change your fuel mix or the brake bias or the differential or your ERS. I don't have enough supported buttons on Xbox to use these, but on PC, I will tell you what I try out. So for the fuel mix, for example, I flick up this knob here and that will increase the fuel mix. And then for the fuel mix decrease, I can slide it back down. I can do the same here for the ERS, which I can flick up and then I can flick back down again for the decrease. And I use these on PC quite a bit and they are very useful. And then for the differential, which is a very important setting if you're not using traction control, I put the differential on this little switch here. So I flick this up and I get more differential and then I flick it down and I get less differential, which can be very useful if I'm driving through certain turns. So for example, I'm coming up to a hairpin. I know I'm going to be tricky on the throttle coming on the exit. So I will flick this down and lower the differential. And then once I'm back on the straight, I will flick it all the way back up and then get more power uh, going to the rear wheels down the straights. And then for the brake balance, I do the same thing here. So I flick it down to send the brake bias to the rear and I flick it up when I need to send it to the front. These are very personal settings and they do change over time. They may even change depending on what car you're on or what track you're on. And if you're using different wheel and pedal setup than I am, then you may want to tweak these especially, or if you have different experiences for, from other games and you want to copy those, those are things that you can consider 
as well but ultimately that is what I have that set to and I've found it quite useful so far I have been playing F1 2020 for quite a while on a wheel and it is the first Formula 1 game I've played on a wheel I played previous games on a controller and F1 2020 still feels great on a controller I come onto it from time to time but I've been tweaking this over and back for the last little while and this is where it feels right at the moment one thing you can attempt to do here is change your settings one at a time and then go out drive a few laps like you may want to for example try oh I'm going to try force feedback at 100 and then you're driving and then you feel oh I'm not getting the consistency through the turns that I wanted so then you may want to dial it down force feedback and calibration they're very trial and error kind of things there's no one perfect setting for everybody in a way you go you need to have a personal feel for this kind of thing but once you get it right the game will feel fantastic and that can be said for any sim racing game i've got my force feedback settings dialed in for pc i've also got them dialed in for xbox and i've also got my dirt rally 2.0 settings on this wheel and once you've taken the time to get them feeling right the games will feel great and you'll have supreme confidence when you're driving and then you can focus on actually driving instead of focusing on changing all sorts of settings. If this video helped you out and you want to see more, check out the guides on the right to get started. Also, to get future guides as they release, you can subscribe to help the channel grow. Enjoy your new settings, have a great day and good luck on track.